I can't log in. Okay, we're ready. All right, traders, great to be with you tonight. Uh, been uh, kind of prepping and getting ready for tonight's presentation. I got a few ideas uh, that I want to share with you. Uh, for those of you who weren't with us last Thursday, I had a I had a rough day <laughs> in the market, and uh, I just want to kind of go through and recap the trade. So sometimes when you're when you're in a trade and you have a bad a bad a bad session. Um, it's good to kind of reset and and go back and look at what you did and and uh, kind of identify where things went wrong and and uh, try and learn from that process so we're going to do that tonight but i want to also before we get started we prepared a little video uh, let's do an audio check how about that let's make sure the audio is working can we do that i'm going to check the the uh, chat box here make sure the audio is working can everybody hear me there might be a little delay. I'm not sure if that's if you can hear me or not. Let me type in. Audio's good? Okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. Making sure we are uh things get all mixed up when you uh start moving all your video equipment around and everything like that. So all right, so we're going to get into a recap of the trading session. I want to go through and I want to show you, you know, sort of a play-by-play, -play, how things developed and why I did the things that I did. Um, I want to identify where things went wrong so that we uh, we can learn from that process. Um, uh, before we do that, um, before we do that though, we created a little video that kind of went through and and summarized and recapped the session. And uh, we're going to go ahead and play that little video right now, if it if it'll work. So give me uh, give me just a moment here, and I'll get that set up, um, because it kind of goes through sort of the the bigger issue, the big challenge of that trading session. So. Let's go ahead and cue that up now, Dave, if we can. Thursday morning, head trader Sean Lucas took a loss during a special charity trading event hosted by the local Chamber of Commerce. The goal for the session was to present the trading profits as a scholarship to support the local high school DECA team. This was a first-of-its-kind event with local businesses, high school, and city government officials in attendance. So what could go wrong? Everything, as it turns out. That morning, the European Union made an unexpected rate policy decision which put price behavior on a very shaky path, forming an epic outside range in early trading. But things had settled down by the time the trading started. Or so we thought. Trading started out fairly routine, with a series of double and triple layer stacks that quickly hit their target. Things were looking good. So after a couple of warm-up trades, it was risk on, and Sean increased position size to try maximizing profits during the hour-long trading session. After all, it's for a good cause, isn't it? But as luck would have it, that was also the precise moment the market started a crushing 41-minute, 21-pip, zero pullback rally that put Sean upside down on the day. But the challenge in this trading session wasn't the rally. Sean can easily trade through these types of grinding moves in the market. They happen all the time. The challenge wasn't the absence of any pullbacks during the rally. Yes, a rally without pullbacks complicates the trading session, but it's hardly a knockout punch. The challenge wasn't even getting stopped out. He was still 12 pips away from the stopping point of no return where he would normally transition into fix-it mode. The bad day actually started long before the first trade was ever logged in the books. Sean started the trading session with a focus on the profits. He was, in his own words, an outcome-motivated trader. You see, normally Sean is a process-oriented trader. The actions he takes in the market are focused on trading tasks, not on profits. But in this trading session with the mayor, local business owners, and five aspiring high school students, everyone was there in support of an outcome. Sean was feeling the pressure of performance, a need to try to control an outcome to match an expectation. And he isn't alone in this tendency of human nature. Don't we all strive to control the results? In this trading session, an attempt to increase lot size to produce a bigger payout for the high school DECA team, as well-intentioned as that is, proved to be the downfall. How many times do we hear Sean say, manage the size? 
The process of building into a position is a critical component of his trading technique and a key performance indicator in his success. The focus of a successful trader is not the profits or even strategy. The focus is on the process and techniques that keep you in the game through every twist and turn of the unpredictable market. The session ended around 9.30 in the morning. An internet complication was a kindly enough opportunity to get folks back to their jobs and daily routines. With the losses already stacked up and the stress of the event now behind him, Sean was finally able to regroup. He got back to his typical focus on task and priority. He had a deep hole to climb out of, so he took an even deeper breath, tapped into some extra liquidity, and went to work. With two hours and a relentless focus on process, Sean was able to climb out of the hole. He closed the computer, jumped into the trader on the street truck, and drove to the high school where he was able to present a $2,374.25 check to the sponsor of the DECA Club, the profits from a torturous three-hour trading session. Remember traders, it's about process, not profits. All right, <laughs> they did a good job on that. That's the first time I've watched. Uh, that's the first time I've seen that. So, um, a couple of things. Number one, <clears throat> you know, when you're in a trading session, there, we in that video we talked about a couple of really important things as traders. It's this idea about being outcome oriented versus process oriented. So when you're focusing on the outcome of your trading event or your trading session versus focusing in on the process or the tasks that you have to pertain, that you have to, uh, that you have to do over and over in your trading session in order to get the results that you're wanting to get. So there's a, can anybody, let, let's just kind of do some interactive dialogue right here. Can anybody tell me the difference really between um, an outcome motivated trader versus a process oriented trader. Well, I'm just going to I'm going to give you a second because I know there's a delay in the in the feed here, but just take a second and just jot down if you would in the chat box what what you believe the, to be the difference between the outcome orientation or the process orientation. Can anybody kind of There we go. So I'm going to I'm going to give you a chance to uh to just chat some type in some of those responses here. Outcome versus process. Outcome is aggressively trading. That I could I could buy into that. It's aggressive. Not focusing on the money. That's another very big important thing when you're trading is not focusing on the money. There's a, re there's a reason, there's a psychology behind uh, all of, of what we do here at Apiary Fund where we say focus on the pips, right? What we're saying is that I don't want you looking at the money until you're at a stage in your psychological development that you, you can handle seeing you know yourself up five ten thousand dollars or down five ten thousand dollars you have to work into that into that uh, psyche where you can manage seeing those kind of numbers um, process oriented people they focus in on tasks and and there's uh, for those of you who are at our income and wealth uh, boot camp not too long ago we talked a lot about this about the differences between the mindset of the outcome oriented trader and the income motivated or I'm sorry the outcome and the process oriented trader where a process oriented trader is has they tend to be very persistent in how they're interacting with the market um, so they don't get they don't they don't suffer a lot of the emotional whiplash that a lot of the outcome motivated traders suffer from because they're really not focused on the outcome they're focused on what they need to do in the moment if that makes sense so as you're sitting in there you're coming into you know your third break of your of your third resistance layer you're you're short the market you're coming into that third break you see that whipsaw form and all of a sudden you got all of this anxiety built into you 
that market is breaking, 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 and it's breaking hard. The there's a there's a there are two different paths, neural paths that that get fired off at that very moment when that market is breaking the resistance level. You're either you're either getting you're either hitting all of your fear and emotion. You're triggering all your fear and all your emotion in your trade, in which ca case it turns off the mental, your, your, your ability to think through and reason what happens. The opposite of that is that a process-oriented trader is saying, okay, now what do I have to do? This is a scenario I've looked at, I've seen it, I've practiced it. Now in this scenario, what do I need to do where that market's breaking up, I'm in three positions, it's breaking up, it's going away from me, it's building, building steam, what is my job at this point? What is my job? What do I need to do? And you can see the difference. The one, the outcome, motivation, all of a sudden gets fearful. All this emotion, the process-oriented trader isn't focused on the emotion of the moment. They're focused on what do I need to do? What are my tasks at hand? If, if you see the difference in that. So process-oriented traders are work-focused, okay? So they're not hoping, they're, they, they don't get into a trading session and sit down and just try and fire off as many, uh, as many trades as they can and hope that they've got the market pe pegged, you know, that they know the right direction of it. They're very, a, a process-oriented trader will sit down They'll start going through their process. And you'll hear me do this a million times when I'm sitting down trading. Okay, my first stack, I'm gonna get in here, I'm gonna get into a short, I'm gonna build into a half a position or half a lot. Or, okay, my first job is build into a full lot. That's my first stack. That's what I'm gonna build into at this point in this area right here. See, that's a very task motivated uh, uh, description of what I'm doing, right? Not, I hope that this thing is going to break and I hope and, and I hope and I know or I hope that it, I make a bunch of money on this first trade, right? You'll never hear me say that in my first entry in the market. What you'll hear me say is that, okay, my job right here is, you know, I feel like we're approaching some resistance level. I feel like the setup, you know, on my five minute chart is supporting, you know, the, the market turning. We've moved more than a price cycle on the five minute chart. My setup is saying I should get into this point. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build into one lot. That's my build, that's my work. My job is to build into that lot. And I don't go all in at the same point. Usually I'll stagger them out around, around a certain area, okay? Okay, so that's, those are the, that's the difference really between the two types of um, a, a, a motivation that is focused on the results versus a motivation that is stuck and focused on what is happening. Now, I gotta tell you, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here, okay? <laughs> Trading in front of you is not the easiest thing. It's not as easy as I might make it look, <laughs> look okay? You know, I've got literally thousands of traders, thousands of people all over the world that are they're glued to every move that I'm making. And in my mind, I know that the decisions that I'm making are being processed and analyzed by all these, all of you. Each one of you out there are in the process of, of analyzing every, every, every choice that I make in the market. And it makes me nervous, to be honest with you. There are times when I'm very nervous as I'm getting into the trading. Um, usually, within a, couple of, uh, within a couple of quick minutes, I can get through those nerves and I can get back in, just get into the flow, get into the zone of trading. And, I, and then you can tell I'm having a good time, you know, building in positions and, you know, managing things and stuff like that. But there was something very different about the trading session on Thursday. Okay, my, I wanted so badly, you know, I went and talked to the, uh, to the DECA club. I went and talked to the, uh, um, the, the, um, the, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, a good friend of mine, Eric. And, uh, you know, we built this, we put this little idea together and, and it was, you know, I was, I was excited, but I was also very nervous about the concept. 
you know, we invited some officials from the city. You've got, we had several of the local business people in there. We had representatives from the high school. And I really, really, really wanted to give the high school a big check. Does that make sense? I really wanted it. And it wasn't selfish motivation. It wasn't, you know, it, it was it was because I really genuinely wanted to provide the high school with a good, solid, you know, a check. Something that they could be like, oh, wow, <laughs> this is awesome. So if you recall in the trading session, I started out with my normal routine. You know, got in a couple of trades. Those went, went well for me. You know, no problems. Maybe, maybe missed it you know maybe within a stack or two they were hitting profit targets everything was really good but there was one moment there when something pin pricked my mind something just like poked me and it said sean you're never going to make a big check you're never going to make a big check if you just sit here and play these little 0.1 lot size trades and and setups you know what you need to do you know sean that if you want to make big money, that you have to put big money into the account, into the trade. And so if you, if you go back and watch that session, you'll, you, you can actually, I physically said, okay, now it's time to get a little bit bigger. Now it's time, I've gone through a couple of iterations here, now it's time to get a little bit bigger in this trade, and I'm gonna increase these lot sizes to about 0.25. That's two and a half size, two and a half times my normal size in these in these builds, right? Now, you know, you've seen me do that. That's not an uncommon thing. But but the, the at that very moment, what was uncommon about that moment versus any other time when I'll change size is that my focus was not on the process. My focus was entirely in the wrong place. My focus was on trying to make as big a check as I possibly could for the DECA team. Which, again, there's nothing wrong with wanting to do something like that, you know, for good. There, there, there's nothing wrong with it. But it changed my focus from the process to the outcome. You, I hope that you can feel that. I hope you can see why that was such a big deal in, in this particular session. Okay, at that very moment, that market ran 20, here, let me pull up a couple of, let me pull up a couple of um, drawings here. So we're gonna draw, pull up a couple of drawings, or, or uh, screen captures. Hopefully you can see that. Just give me a thumbs up, thumbs up if you can see the, uh, of, um, the screen here. Draw. So I can't really draw on, on this. This is a, just a, a, a screenshot of what the market was. I screen captured everything after the trade so that I could go back and look at it. But if you'll recall, uh, I made a couple of trades in here, made a little bit of money, made, a, made I think I made a little bit of profit on that little up leg and then one down here. And then as it was coming up, I started building. It had this candle right here. We had this big, strong candle, followed by this big, bearish candle. And that's where I started building my short positions. Okay. Now, there's nothing wrong with building a short position in this po at this point. Yes, the market was up. But look, you know, lower lows, lower lows, you know, lower highs. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with building a short position in here. Would we all agree? There's nothing wrong with that. Now, each one of us will an analyze the market differently, but that's okay. That's what creates a market. But there's nothing wrong with building a short position lower in lows, here. Lower lows. Lower lows. It, you've you know, watched me do this highs. a million times, okay? <laughs> there's so, nothing wrong with building a know, short position Having in that here, market we, go up and start and pop out here and get this little pullback right in here, this little whipsaw, especially off of that, off of that previous high, you know, I'm going to build another layer right in here. Okay. Nothing extraordinary about that. Nothing really out of the, nothing that would violate my rules. Now, at this point, 
I would be looking back and saying, okay, where's my point of no return? Is it here or is it here? Okay, so technically I can, normally I should be able to, to follow that. But where's the, where's the number here? Let's see, I think this is looking for screen number three, maybe four, right here. <clears throat> So really what we're looking at is about 33 pips from our first entry point, 21 up to here, and then an additional 12 up to here. Does that make sense? So as I'm looking at that, you know, making my point of no return right here didn't make any sense. So my point of no return was clear up here. That's the point where all of a sudden nothing in this trade setup will is is what I expected it to be. And sure enough, the market, <clears throat> the market rallied up from that point. Here's the big whipsaw, followed by a, a secondary candle that was just as big. So I built in another layer of shorts here, built in another layer of shorts here, built in another layer of shorts here. And the distance between the low point and the high point here is about 21 pips right here. Hopefully you can see that just fine. So yes, I'm in upside down in this trade, but there's nothing about my rules, my, my, how I engage the market. Now this is just me. This is just my strat, my technique, the way that I approach the market. Nothing about that scenario said would have said give up now if had it crossed up above this point over here that's a different story that's a very different story now i'm crossing the point of no return where my models say don't get into these shorts anymore and and in fact you're in a bad way and you need to get into fix it mode what was different about this session what was different about this session isn't the fact that i built a built a stack here built a stack here, built a stack here, built a stack here, built a stack here, built a stack here. That was not the difference. That I'll do that all day long in a normal, in any kind of market. I'll, I'll do that as you, you, you've watched me do that many, many, many times. There's nothing wrong, according to my model, there's nothing wrong in doing that. What was wrong in this situation though is that instead of coming in with smaller lot sizes, like the point ones, I was building into point two fives. So number one, I'm building, I'm building bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger size coming into this than I ever would have on a point one lot size trade. Normally, my model says, you know, you can you'll be able to weather most of these runs, you know, 95 out of 100, you'd be able to weather most of those runs, Sean. That's, there's nothing, unless, and this is a big unless, unless you get in too big, right? And if you get in too big, there's nothing that you can do at a certain point. You are beyond, you are beyond fix-it mode. And that's what I, I found myself in beyond fix it mode about the time. It's not in this one. This was three. Let's look at four. About the time the market did, um, let's see, five maybe. No, four. So about the time the market did this little rally right here, I was beyond fix it mode. Now, that's you know the 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 recording shut off. The uh, we lost internet connection somewhere back in this area when we were trading, and so you didn't get to see the worst of it. There was this little breakout right here that just put me in all kinds of hurt on that trade. Now, most everyone had left the building at this point. You know, most of the audience was like, oh man, I can't watch the carnage any longer. <laughs> and so they're going off and working at their jobs and, you know, and, and, and uh, 
probably not thinking another minute of the trading session. However, I was still sitting there and I was still trading through that process. When the market broke these two highs right here, when the market broke those two highs, it put me into a really bad spot. Now, um, at that moment, that's the moment where I start to, you know, I was starting to crack a little bit in the way that I approached the market. So number one, I had made a big, big mistake. The second challenge was, is that market ran a little bit stronger and a little bit further and a little bit harder than I anticipated, but nothing out of the ordinary. I should have been able to get through that. But when it, cr when it broke these two highs right in here, that's when I was just too heavy in the trade. I was in a really bad way in those trades and I couldn't, I couldn't endure the break. So that's where I took the big loss. Now, that, now at that point, that's psychologically, there's, a, there's something that happens at that point when you're in that trade, right? That's when your bad day becomes, um, you can, it, your bad day can tip into a death spiral where you can just keep doing it over and over and over again. And that's when, you know, I've watched uh, traders blow up one account after another account after another account as they go through that death spiral because they just can't let it go. But at that very moment, that's when you need the reset. That's when you need, you know, when things, when they get that bad <laughs> on you, that's when you need a reset. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it psychologically, that's what Apiary Fund has put into the framework of our trading, of our, uh, of our trading platform we built that mechanism to give you a reset when you need it, right? Now, we set that at 5%. Um, that's, the, that's the max that the fund will allow a trader to go in the hole. Um, uh, we can set that at whatever we want to. My particular settings were a little bit bigger than 5%. Um, just because, you know, there are times when I'll have these drawdowns and, and, uh, and normally in a normal market, I can work through those in, in, in fine. Um, and even in this session, I was able to work through those, but I still had to reset psychologically. I had to reset at that point. Okay, I, everyone was gone from the room not everybody, most of the folks were gone from the room. And I'm sitting there with a, with a you know, a, a significant loss, you know, greater than 10, 12, 15% on that account. And I had to go through a mental process. I could have sat there and said, okay, no, I'm revenge trading. I'm getting back after this and I don't care what happens. I'm just going to make this work or but again, what kind of what kind of focus is that? If I go in there, you know, I'm focused on making it work. That's not the right focus. That's focused on the or on the outcome, not in the process. But what I did was I I sat down and I said, "Look, Sean, you know, I'm talking through it with myself. You know what your mistake was, right? Yes, of course I knew what my mistake was. I got in too heavy. I was getting in too deep through the process." And so I'm, I'm now recalibrating my mind and I'm saying, look, okay, what is your process? What is the process that you're gonna go through? What, what process do you go through every time you trade? And, and can you do it? Are you in a state of mind where you can do that? And I had to literally just talk myself through that and say, come to the point where I said to myself, yes, I can focus on the process. Yes, I can. I know my process can get me out of this hole. I know that. I know that I can put the work in to do this, right? I need the market to make a couple of good moves in my direction. I need to be very specific in the setup that I'm going after, right? I need to be a little bit more diligent than I was earlier. I was a little flippant earlier but I said to myself, I've got to be a little bit more cognizant. I got to be a little bit more right. I've got to be a little bit more 
a little bit more crisp on my timing. I've got to not get into these big, these big um, overextensions. You know, I, I, need, I cannot let this market run against me the way that I've got the, had the previous market run against me. And so I shifted a little bit of my strategy and my technique to more of a one trade fire hit approach to the market. So rather than doing my typical wobble techniques going into, a, into an extended trend, I changed my approach just slightly. And I said, okay, now I'm, I'm gonna go in, I'll, I'll go in fairly big on, on these trades. I, I will commit capital to these trades. But these are gonna be very high probability trades. So I'm talking trades where I've got an 80% probability of hitting um, and then if the market does go against me, I've got to be very diligent in getting out. So irrespective of how much money or lose or money I'm making or losing, and in fact, for the rest of that trading session, I did not focus one bit on the money until I knew I was getting close to my target or to my recoup and my target. So, I just knew that if the market didn't do what I needed it to do within two to three minutes, maybe a little bit longer, if I didn't get that market to do what it needed to do and it was moving against me, I closed out of the trades. So in this period throughout, in this period right in here, I took several big, big trades and made and, and was right through the process. So I played the short side all through this little, through this little down leg. <clears throat> Had several trades, one trade, fire, hit the target, done. Set up, hit the, set up happens again, enter into a trade, hits the target, done. I did that a series of, a few times right in here. Uh, the market pulled up right after this down, long extension, the market pulled back up and I built another short position right in here, right? You know, as it's right at that resistance level and the downtrend, and it didn't go. You see that right in there? In fact, it went up. So I took another big loss on the, on the trade. So remember, I was, I'm getting in a little bit bigger on these trades, but I'm improving my, I'm working to improve my probability through that process. Here, it was the first loss after the major losses back here. And that market rallied back up and I took the loss. So now I'm, you know, making up ground, lost a little bit. So three steps forward, now one step back, <laughs> right? And let's look at five here. Let's see if five gives me. So take a loss in here. Market rallied up, pulled back, rallied up. Took some shorts in here, picked that up. Market broke or went sideways in here and broke right here. So I built some shorts right on that break lower, picked up a little bit on that little leg down. Market rallied back up. Now I'm at a resistance, picked up another trade right in here and closed that trade out right here. And then the last trade of the day, not that one. Last trade of the day was, <clears throat> not that one. Where'd my last slide go? Right in here. So the market had rallied up, pulled back, rallied up one more time built my last position in the market right in here, came down, didn't quite, didn't quite close, hit my target here, rallied back up, back down, back up, back down, and finally closed out of my trades right in there. And then this trading session ended because I'd hit $52,374.25 on that on that last trade. So I had made up what I had lost through the trading session and actually uh, made up a little bit more 
that I could uh, then take over to the, the DECA club. So I jumped in the truck, drove over to the high school, and pre presented the DECA, uh, some of the students of the, from the DECA team with, their, with a check for $2,374. In, in that in that session okay it took me two out two and a half hours after the end of the YouTube live presentation to recoup that to recoup that money but I was a machine about it after the fact okay I never it was not about the money at that point it was about the process what do I need to do to to rebuild and rework this account what do I need to do? What is my task? What is my job here? And I got to work, right? I placed thousands of trades in that two and a half hours after, after the, the trading session and uh, was able to recoup it. But the only reason I was able to recoup is because number one, I had that moment where I had to ask myself, are you going to keep playing the game you you have been playing where you're just focused on the profits or are you going to get back to what you know works and until I could honestly answer that with within myself I had no business being in the market I needed to be shut down I needed to be stopped out I needed to be out of the market if I had continued trading the way that I was trading during the the YouTube live session, I would have, I, you know, I would I, there's a very good chance I would have spiraled out of control through that process. So until I could honestly answer that question to myself, I I needed to stop trading. But once I knew that I was honest with myself and that I would follow my my patterns and my rules, and and I set up a little strategy that that you know that would get me back to where i needed to be i set that all up in my head and then i executed those those uh those trades and like i said you know after that in during that two and a half hours i had a couple of big losses when the market decided to do what i didn't expect it to do uh, so i i suffered a couple of losses through that but by and large I'd get into the setup, hit, hit the targets, close the trade, find another high probability target or setup, you know, commit to commit the funds to the trade and then did that over and over and over and made, made was able to make, fortunately able to make up um, the trading session. So a couple of things, um, just to recap, number one, the difference between uh, between process and outcome. Traders, listen, I know each one of you are, e each one of you are in a situation where you want to make this happen, work for you, right? And you want it so badly. But if you think about it, what you're doing is you're focusing all of your energy on the outcome of your trading. And until you can scale that back and even just not even, not even focus on it, but focus on the mechanics, the things that you can do right now in your trading. When you can focus on those things that you can do right now, it'll make a, a world of difference in your trading. Just, just getting rid of this idea that I've got to be, you know, I got to be pulling down twenty-five thousand dollars every week out of my trading account your focus is just in the wrong place it needs to be and if you think about what we do here at apiary fund is we try and focus you in on the things that matter the most right what's your strategy what's your system you know what are the what are the rules that are that you're employing can you get into the market and execute a a uh, a requirement for your beeline you know, every time you sit down in front of the market and, re and, and try to accomplish a silver two requirement in the market, you're training your mind to focus on the tasks that will 
that will result in that requirement being accomplished, right? You have to focus on the tasks in order to do the thing that you need to do in the market. So that's what Apiary Fund does, is we focus you in on the tasks of trading and the things that you have to do every day in the market. Every day you're sitting down in a trading session, you've got to be doing this. And if the market goes against you, that just, you just, you just have another set of these are the things that I have to be doing if the market goes against me. If I get stopped out, there's a whole nother set of these things I have to do. And, and so you're constantly being responsive to the market by doing the tasks and doing the things that you can control. You have no control over the outcome. Zero. It, it, the market is too, it, it's too random. <laughs> I hate saying that, but it's true. The market is too random for you to control the outcome of every session. But what you can control is your process, and your process needs to focus on all those different scenarios. You know, what if you get a 32 pip run in the market? What set, what tasks do you need to do if you're upside down 32 pips? Hopefully you're not closed, out, stopped out, because there's a whole nother set of tasks that, that will keep you in the game through that process. So I hope that's starting to make sense. Uh, the second thing <clears throat> is that reset is so important. When you have a bad day, that reset, you've got to clear the mind. You've got to purge everything, all the negativity, you know, of having the mayor sit there, watch you lose money <laughs> while he's sitting there watching you. <laughs> By the way, he's a good friend of mine and, I, and I'm just embarrassed <laughs> that it happened. But you have, to, you have to get to that point where you can reset. You have to like get rid of it. And again, if you look at what Apiary Fund does, you know, we will put you on timeout for, you know, 24 hours until you, we start the next session. That time is valuable time for you to reflect, to learn. You need to learn what, what went wrong. I needed to learn what I did wrong in that trading session, and I did. When you get stopped out at Apiary, you need to go in and, and, and review all the things that happened during that session not to beat yourself up because if you beat yourself up you're just doing more harm <laughs> than good right but identifying it's not hard for me to say it's not hard for me to say Sean you got too big in your trades that's not hard for me to say it's not hard for me to recognize what happened I I did it right I'm not beating myself up over it. I'm not sitting there saying, oh, you're a bad trader, Sean, because you got into 0.25 lot sizes and got in way too fast. I'm not beating myself up over that. I made a mistake. And I knew and I know that it was a mistake. And I'm owning the mistake. And you can bet that I'm not going to be making that mistake in the near future. I may have runs that go against me. I may not be able to call the market perfectly. That's okay. But I'm not going to make the mistake of getting over positioned going into a trading session like this. Okay. Another mistake that I made in that session was, in fact, I was even talking about this with one of the traders in the room beforehand but the characteristic of the market had changed recently. In the last two and a half weeks, or last two weeks, one and a half to two weeks, the character of the, tra of the euro dollar has changed. There's been some, in fact, if you look back on this, that very session, there was seven, you can count them, there were seven outside ranges going into that trading session. Okay, seven outside ranges, one after another. Outside range, outside range, outside range, outside range, outside range, outside range, outside range. Seven times we had outside ranges. I knew that going into the session, but I did not compensate my trading for it. 
So that's the second mistake that I made in that, in that session. Those two, those two mistakes work together. But I can promise you that, again, in my next trading session, I'm going to be cognizant of what type of market condition. I'm not going to get in too big. Those are tasks that I have to now make sure that I don't, I don't make those mistakes. That's my job as the trader. My job is to make sure that I don't get in too big and to make sure that I, that I account for the price action of that particular session in my, in my trading. Hopefully that makes sense, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, uh, you know, hopefully this has been a good session because I think the things that we talk about, while they may not be the, uh, the most, um, while, these, while these things may not be like the strategy or, you know, the, the, the how do you do this, I think that this session has been very important because we're really talking about the mind and what your job is as a trader. You know, a, a lot of you, a lot of you will think that it's your job is to pick a good strategy or to find a good strategy, let alone pick it. You know, you just have to find it. You find it and then you put it in the market somehow and it makes you all the money. I wish it was that easy. It's not that easy, right? Trading involves the person. You know, there are there are algorithms out there, but the the type of algorithm the type of algorithms that produce income while the operator's not in front of the computer, they cost a lot of money. <laughs> not the kind of money that you and I will be able to afford. Those are those are the type of those are the type of auto trading systems that uh, that banks and and governments will invest in, not not people like you and I. So for you and I, we're sitting there. We're the operator. It's our mind. Our mind is what's making this work. And so a good trader has to learn how to control the mind. And so as we talk about a bad day in the market, what we're talking about is how do you manage the mind through a series of losses. And again, you'll see <clears throat> losses are not that bad. <laughs> losses are not, they're all a part. They're a part of the world that we live in in the market. That there's nothing inherently wrong in the loss. It's, a, it's just a function. It's, it's part of the landscape, if you will. Now, how we respond to those losses, that's very important. H how you focus on your trading, that's very important. You've got, you know, as a trader, you've got four components that are all working together inside of you four different areas of your of your being are working you've got your purpose your drive your spirit all of those things that's one area and that's and that's that's the motivation that's where you're going it's it gives you direction right the second component is your emotion okay your emotions are like fuel they either they either push you in the right direction or they push you in the very wrong direction right you so think of your emotions i hear it hear it said a lot of times that traders shouldn't have the emotions when they're trading that's hogwash we're, we're going to deal with emotions we have them and they can be used for good or they can be used for bad right so Two components, your, your spirit, your drive, your direction, whatever that is, however you want to call it, and then your emotions. The third component is your body. Something has to push the buttons, right? And so sometimes we'll be sitting there trading, 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 and we'll see that we're losing money, and it triggers a reflex inside of us close 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 or bye 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 there's a reflex right that happens 
if you don't allow your body to go through the mind to make a decision, then you're going to have a problem in your trading. So that's the third component. We've got spirit, direction, you know, purpose, whatever you want to call that. You've got emotion, and then you've got the body, and the body is going to make this is going to respond through two, one of two paths. It's only either going to be a reflex or it's going to be uh, processed by your brain, which is the final component. Your brain acts as central command, right? It's got the purpose and the emotions and the body, and it's managing all those components in your trading. And so when you sit there and you watch me trade, what you're seeing, what you're seeing is me allowing my brain, allowing my mind to manage my emotions in the right way they need to be managed, making decisions that will get us to the destination that we want to get to, right? And sending instructions to the body so that the body, the fingers, are doing the right thing in the market. That's it. So if you want to be a successful trader, you really do have to focus on those four components of who you are. And at some point, you're going to find a strategy that talks to you, that works for you. That's fantastic. That's, you know, but even if you didn't have a strategy, even if all you did in the market was buy at support and resistances and sold at res you know bought at support, sell at resistances, even that is as good enough a strategy if you have all of those components working and a good set of rules behind you. All right, traders, uh, let's open it up for some questions and uh, let's see what we can. Uh, if I can clear up anything, uh, you can ask me questions about the trading session. You can ask me questions about the, uh, you know, the outcome, motivation, process motivation. Uh, by the way, I do have some notes. Um, so in the description underneath the uh, under underneath this video, I think there's a a link to uh, get the notes from tonight's class but in those notes I go through and talk about outcome motivation process motivation um, so if you want a copy of those notes I think the link is right there in the uh, right there in the description underneath the video uh, did I record the post fix um, Yes <laughs> and no. <laughs> so I switched over to, I had to switch over to a different internet feed. I switched over into my phone and I did a QuickTime capture. I switched computers over to my, other, my laptop. I was on the Surface Pro. And so I opened up the QuickTime record on my laptop so that I could record the session and once you know it, it didn't record. So I thought I was recording it, but it didn't actually record. So unfortunately, you didn't have it. A couple of things. Number one, I did uh, I did tap into some extra liquidity through that re, re um, through my uh, makeup session. <laughs> So I did tap into a little extra liquidity, which, you know, most traders don't have that luxury. Um, here's the reason why I did it. I want to, let me explain this, number one. So when I'm trading in front of a group like this, when I'm trading in front of a group like you, um, I'll maintain that 0.1 lot size because I want to keep the account size small, uh, the, a level three trading account at Apiary Fund. Um, when I'm trading professionally, you know, I'm used to trading bigger lot sizes. So I did tap into some extra liquidity and traded a normal trading session uh, like with the extra liquidity and that's how I was able to recoup that a little bit faster. So um, that's not a luxury that any one of you will 
well, some of you may have that luxury. <laughs> some of you may have a little account, you know, somewhere that you can tap into or something like that. But I did that to recoup. So um, call that cheating, if you will. But I call it, <laughs> I call it getting back into the saddle. <laughs> I needed to get back into the saddle. <laughs> All right. Um, what advice would you give the over trader? Give to over traders um, or extremely obsessive types that continue to struggle. Is there a platform or a pattern that you have seen over the years with this type of characteristic? So typically, you know, your aggressive traders will be the the, you know they'll be the ones that tend to over trade aggressive traders will tend to over trade intuitives will over trade as well um but not for not for not not to the extent that the aggressive traders will so people like me um we have this we'll have the tendency to over trade are there patterns yes absolutely um so um, if you think about learning to play piano or something like that, so you, you've got this song that you're practicing, and, and at first you're just dink, 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 and then pretty soon you're like dink, 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 and then pretty soon you're dink, 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 and you're rushing it, and it, the, you know, the song is calling for one tempo, and you're actually going at three times your tempo, right? Musicians will understand this analogy traders do the same thing so what happens is sometimes a trader will sit down and they'll be like you know I need to place my stack here I'll need to place so what happens for aggressive traders like me and some of the others out there is that we literally have to force ourselves to say okay my task is to not get into more than one trade or one stack here stack being whatever you define it as one lot half a lot you know whatever that is and so now you learn to spread those trades out. You know, you don't want to get them all, get all them all in. And then you have to exercise patience to the next level, you know, whatever that level is. And so, you know, just learning to, to, to scale back your, your, your need for clicking, <laughs> learning to scale that back is going to be a very helpful, a helpful trick to manage that obsessive, that compulsive need to, to trade, right? Because that is a thing, for sure. Uh, let me kind of scroll through the... Ch uh, did you fade the support or resistance moves or wait until you knew the market was continuing or consolidating? So when I was in... When I was when I got when I regrouped and got back into it, <clears throat> we were finally. Wouldn't you know it? I mean, seriously, look at this. So this from here, from this low to this high. Was, you know, that was where I got into trouble. That entire section. Through that entire section, let's look back here on number two. I was looking for the pullback. Pull back here, no. 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 Pull back here, nope. Pull back here, yes. So once I started getting that pullback, then I knew that's when I, I knew I had a chance to to get back into the saddle. That's where I started uh, taking those larger trades, but very high probability points. So um, this pullback right in here, this first pullback, I was able to recoup a good chunk of the of the losses, built up another another short position right in here and was able to pull back an even bigger part of the losses through that. So I took a couple of trades through here. I think uh, one was the breakdown from here, which put me down at this point. 
And then when it broke down one more time, I took a momentum trade down through here. So another big, high, big lot, high probability move at that point. Then I got back into this scenario, market rallied up, took a short, took a loss. <clears throat> so getting back to your question, really it's a function, it was a function of getting back into the market it wasn't necessarily fading. I was taking high probability, very quick setups uh, with the larger lot size. So I was trading a, a five lot at the time. So getting into five lots at a time. All right, I think that was Bruce Mason's question. <laughs> Did I invite the major <laughs> to the trader on? No. <laughs> uh, uh, Larry says, uh, you were doing it for charity, which I was happy for. I'm happy you did. That's the thing. That's what, you know, I really, you don't, you, I can't really explain, but I really wanted to. Like, I really, really, really wanted to give those, those students a check. You know, I just thought, man, what an inspiration. And that's what I was thinking. I wasn't even I wasn't even doing this, you know, to try and make a bunch of money for myself or for the apiary fund or for whomever. I was just like, oh, I want to make a difference in these kids' lives, and I made an impression for sure. <laughs> there was one guy that was uh, there was one guy in the room, and he's as he's walking out, he's like, you know, I really, really, really wanted to learn how to trade. Now I'm not so sure. <laughs> and I was like, Psh, balloon faded, <laughs> deflated. <laughs> anyway. All right. <clears throat> Let me go back through these questions. Is this helpful, traders? I hope this has been helpful. I am like, Yeah. Do you, do you do a session about tax responsibility and running this as a business? Uh, it's been a few. Uh, Paul asked a question about uh, another another type of session. Yes, we do. I do. <clears throat> we do focus in on the uh, on the. Um, on the tax component there's a there's a lot of reasons why a trader may want to run their trading business as a trading business run your trades through a trading business um, I for those of you that are at apiary fund we will I'll look at getting a calendar and I an event on the calendar for taxes we we used to do them a little bit more regularly and we've kind of dropped the ball on that I think so I'll look at adding that back to the calendar Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, Aaron Hampton uh, will definitely be posting this to the YouTube. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, was your confidence high in the high probability, knowing that the? Oh, that's a really good Gerald. Gerald for Werda, my good friend. Gerald, how are you? Um, was my confidence in the high probability time bit high? <laughs> was my did I have good confidence through that? My confidence. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this because um, there was a stage when I had that last when that that last little pop in the market happened. There was a stage right in there where I got a little rattled. I just lost the internet. Um, I had to go. I had to go grab another computer and run my trades through my phone. So that's all happening at the exact same moment. And I would have been fine through that moment had the internet not dropped and had I not 
like been frozen out of it because I was blind to what was happening in the market until I could get my other computer set up. That's when I got, that's when my nerves got a little rattled. That's when I, I started getting a little bit rattled at that point. I was, I was managing well through the beginning half, the beginning stage of the trades. Um, and then I had to, that's when I had to have that little heart to heart with myself. That's when I like, okay, Sean, seriously, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you know better than this. You know that you have your, you know that your, your process works. You know that your technique works. Why are you trying to do something that you have less confidence and less control over? Once I had that little, once I had that little talk with myself, um, then when I had those high probability trades, I was able to, to get into the positions that I was looking to get into. So without any, without any hesitation, that, that honestly, that comes with a lot of practice in the market. It, it just takes time, iterations, right? You have to be, you have to have worked through so many trading sessions in order to get that level of confidence in your trading. But even then, the markets will push you one day or many days or some day. It'll push you to the end and you'll, and you'll get yourself, you, you'll get rattled, you know. I don't know a trader around. I, don't, I know even Drunken Miller. I know, uh, you know, Buffett. I know all those guys. At some point, they may not show you, but at some point they get rattled. And that's when, when you get the rattle, that's when you really can distinguish a successful trader from the rest of the crowd. So, because you'll, you'll watch, they'll talk to themselves, they'll, they'll, they'll put themselves through an interview <laughs> and they won't continue and they won't jump back into the market until they've interviewed themselves successfully. <laughs> and at that point, They'll do it, and they'll be right on their game again. There won't be, they won't miss a beat. Yes, they may have taken a loss. Yes, they may have had a bad quarter, but they're right back in the saddle again, and that's an important. I, I guess that's the takeaway from tonight is make sure that you are focused in on the right things in the market so that you can have that confidence in your trading. Um, <laughs> thank you, Lynn. That's so nice of you. Appreciate that. <clears throat> yeah, I got off task with my desire for the kids. You know, if I'm going to get off task, I'm okay if that's the reason. If I'm doing it for my own greed, man take me out of the market go go put me in the corner for a week <laughs> don't let me trade all right traders i think we'll wrap up i um unless you have any last final questions um just want to, in closing, uh, just again, just a real quick recap, focus on, make sure our focus is on the process, on the tasks. As a trader, you have a job in the market, right? It's not to control the outcome, it's to control the inputs, to control the tasks. When you sit down at the computer, you've got a job to do. You're responding to everything that's happening in the market. Focus on your job. The results will follow. If you do really well at focusing in on the things that you can control and your tasks in the market, the results will be there in the end of the session. Or you just keep working at it until they're there. Some sessions will be five minutes, some will be five hours, whatever. But that's your job is to focus in on the tasks, not on the outcome. When you focus on the outcome, it just it just triggers all kinds of of you know 
psychological, emotional challenges through that process. Second thing is, is once you get to that point where you're starting to get rattled, just break. You got to take the break, right? It's built into apiary. That break is built into the apiary fund model, fortunately. Um, and that has saved a lot of traders from the death spiral, right? You won't have that experience if you learn how to take the break. And then you need to get back into the saddle. You need to say, you need to have that shift from the, from the outcome over back over to the task. And do not let yourself trade until you've successfully made that shift back to focusing on the things that are most important, okay? Um, again, just check out that website if you want to pick up the notes. Um, so what I'm doing, uh, just a new thing, is I, you know, before each of these sessions, I kind of just jot down everything that I'm going to cover. Um, that way I, I, so I thought, you know what, I might as well just give those out. So um, I'm going to try and do that during our sessions is, you know, take the notes and hand those notes out as, as part of these little training sessions. So. But that is in the description below. Um, if you wouldn't mind, if you like this, if you like this session, go ahead and give it a thumbs up in the uh, in the YouTube channel in, underneath the video there, the little uh, the little thumbs up icon. <laughs> we really appreciate that. It helps us get the good word of Apiary Fund out to other people who you know might be passing by and and so forth. So, in in. In closing here, I just want to wish you the very best of success in your trading. Um, that's our we're, Apiary Fund is focused on, on developing successful traders. Uh, we are very unique in what you'll find out there. You know, we're, we, yes, we have training. Yes, we have education. Yes, we have classes, loads and loads and loads of classes. But our focus is on developing a trader. Okay, that's our focus. That's what Apiary Fund does. If we can do, if we do a good job at developing traders, I know that the Apiary Fund will continue to grow. The fund itself will continue to grow and Apiary will, will be successful. So, you know, in your, in your lives, when you're trading there, just remember there's going to be good days. There are going to be bad days. And this, what we talked about tonight, is just a very important part of the process of learning how to become a good trader. That's it. Okay? We, we, need, to, we need to learn how to manage ourselves in the market. And that's what we're talking about tonight. So I wish you the best of success in, your, in whatever bad day comes your way that uh, you'll be able to get back in the saddle, re, re, refocus, regroup, you know, get back to focusing on those things that really matter, so those things that you can control in the market. If you do that and if you get good at it, I have all the confidence in the world that you'll be successful at, and, at trading. And what better endeavor is there, you know? Like, I'd rather do this than work at Walmart. <laughs> Nothing against Walmart. Uh, but I'd rather do this. <laughs> it's worth the time. It's worth the energy. It's worth your. Uh, it's worth focusing on. So, thank you, traders. Wish you the best of success, and uh, we will. Oh, I forgot. Almost forgot. We will not be doing a. We will not be doing a live this Wednesday. So this will replace the Wednesday live. Um, I've got to take a Boy Scout troop out on a camp out. So I'm going to be leaving. Uh, I'll be leaving Wednesday and won't get back till Saturday. Uh, we will still be doing the trading room on Thursday, but it will be Nate and Todd doing that on Thursday. So a slight change on that. So check out no YouTube Live Wednesday, but we will be doing the trading room on Thursday morning with Todd and Nate. So good luck, and I will. Uh, we'll get back at this. We'll uh, do some more trading sessions and we'll see you next we'll see you next time we meet, which will be the following Wednesday. Thanks everyone. <laughs>